In this video, I thought I'd give a short insight into what a domain-specific profile is, some of the benefits, and how I go about doing this in Rhapsody now, based on my experience. Firstly, a profile is a type of package that extends the URML language. Profiles contain stereotypes to represent new concepts and meanings. Profiles can also add new tags, and in the case of Rhapsody, can convey properties that change the user interface. SysML, for example, is a profile that extends URML and it contains a stereotype called a block. Whilst a block in SysML is a general purpose element for architectural specification, within any given model, there's likely to be different types of blocks. We could further classify or replace the idea of a block using stereotypes of our own. For example, here I have a prototype for a profile I'm dubbing my Autobahn profile as it's designed to speed up the journey into productive model-based systems engineering and builds on my automotive sector experience. In this profile, some blocks may represent systems, while others may represent subsystems or functionality performed by subsystems. Having created these stereotypes, I can use them in the browser. Let's create a logical system package with a logical system element inside it. Here you can see that the browser is representing these new term stereotyped elements as though they are part of the tool's modeling language, including giving them their own categories and icons in the browser. Stereotypes are a bit like fancy dress. We can stereotype base URML elements to give them new meaning. With Rapsi, unlike some of its competitors such as Cameo, the extension mechanism for writing a domain-specific profile does not require you to write any code. It's based instead on static values set in the profile and stereotype properties. The use of new terms, like this logical system stereotype I've added here, can be conveyed by the profile in such a way that they change the Rhapsody menus. New term stereotypes can also be applied to diagrams. Here's a stereotype I've used to create my own architecture definition diagram type. The drawing toolbar for the diagram has been customised using properties on the stereotype. This enables me to add new classifications of element types to the drawing toolbar, but also subset default element types so that users are not burdened with unnecessary choices. Let me quickly change this diagram back to the standard object model diagram type. Here you can see that it has options such as objects, classes, associations and links. By applying the new term stereotype, however, we can specialise and simplify the available palette of tools. I've essentially created my own domain-specific block definition diagram type, albeit that I've added further classifiers such as logical systems, logical subsystems and subsystem functions. This makes it clearer and simpler for a non-URML expert to draw a necessary structure, as they can work more closely with familiar terms. A system comprises of subsystems and subsystems own subsystem functions. By using this domain-specific profile, I've made a choice about how to adapt the generic SysML language up front, rather than leaving it to end users. This reduces the burden placed on end users to choose how to represent their concepts using this generic language. Using properties on elements, I've also applied some more direct constraints. For example, subsystem functions can be used by subsystems and not by systems. This makes it possible to achieve a more consistent outcome with less training. Such customizations become valuable at scale when you start to deploy MBSE in a mass user environment where black belt SysML experts are not 10 to a penny. Rather, everyone has a job to do and a limited time to do it. In building a number of these profiles for different clients, one of the techniques I've centered on is the use of different types of packages to simplify menus for role-based work. Here's an example. You can see that there are a number of different package types that I've made available on the right-click menu for this project. 
For example, I quite like the idea of a use case package where the right click menus are simplified to just elements needed for use case analysis. As I want use case analysis to be done by domain specialists, I removed SysML types they don't need, like blocks, parts and ports. In this instance, I haven't actually added any new concepts. Rather, I've just simplified the menus so that users working on these packages can focus on the job at hand. I quite like this idea of subsetting packages in this way. I also like the flatter ordered structure that the new term packages can give so that users don't have to drill too deep to find the error of the model they're working on. That's just a very short introduction into what domain specific profiling is and some of the benefits, such as easing adoption by domain specialists, improving the consistency of models and simplifying training by removing the need for all end users to learn all the SysML and UML language. I wanted to finish off by just giving you a glimpse of how I approach building profiles like this for clients. As you can see here, the profile is specified using properties which formulate how the menu should be structured and what the context menu of an element should allow. For small profiles, these can be doctored by hand. What I found through experience is that manually keeping all these properties in sync becomes exponentially harder as you progressively add new terms, especially as names of things often change during the forging of a profile. To solve this issue, I've created a meta modeling profile and plugin to apply a simple model based approach to building up the profile properties. This enables me to draw the relationships I want between meta classes and get the code to automatically update the corresponding property values. This makes it much more fun to build a profile. For example, adding a composition relationship will allow a nesting in the browser and using an aggregation relationship will add the element type to the drawing toolbar of a diagram. To illustrate this, let's look at an example. Firstly, I'm going to add some new icons to the profiles Rhapsody project. These will be used to represent a new type of package called an actor package. Actor packages will perform the role of housing actors shared by other packages and will have their own icons to distinguish them in the browser. I'll now add a stereotype to represent the actor package type. I'll make this a new term stereotype applicable to the base UML package type. Checking the new term box tells Rhapsody that it needs to add actor packages as a category in the browser. It also means that some of the properties applied to the stereotype will come into play. Let's use these properties to specify a new icon for actor package elements in the browser. I'll also set this separate property that specifies which icon to use when displaying a category grouping elements of this type. In general, it's better for the stereotypes not to have spaces in their name as it makes managing the properties for them easier. So I've not used spaces in the browser and I will give the actor package a human readable name via its property instead. I'll also give it a category name for use in the Rhapsody browser. Using a number here is a trick I use particularly for new term packages as it acts to order the package types in the root of the Rhapsody browser making them easier to find. This will become more obvious in a minute. I'm now going to switch to the meta model that I'm using to maintain the menu related properties. This is declared separate from the profile using a class model, hence doesn't need to be deployed to end users. As I mentioned, this meta modeling based approach enables me to build the menu structures graphically. As I can't draw class relationships between stereotypes, I will use stereotype classes in the model to represent them instead. To begin with, I need to add a class to represent the actor package. I'm using a stereotype in my meta model profile to represent this as a new term. I'll then draw a dependency to bind this class to the stereotype that I want the properties to be updated for. A number of classes are already specified in the meta model for this profile. I want actor package to be available on the right click menu for the project. 
so I'm going to use a composition relationship to specify this. I'll drag the class representing the auto MBSC profile onto the diagram and draw the composition. I also want actor packages to be in the right click menu for elements typed as use case packages. So I'll drag that concept in from the browser and draw another composition relationship. Finally, I'm going to use a stereotype to say that actor packages should be placed in the auto MBSC element submenu. At this point, I can run the plugin code that sets or updates the properties based on this meta model that I've specified. This can take a minute or two, but it's a lot quicker than trying to find all the necessary properties and update them by hand, especially when the number of terms becomes large or you want to tweak or change their names. As you can see here, the meta modeling plugin displays the aggregates properties for these new terms in a simple table. This allows me to spot mistakes. For example, my new actor package is missing some element types. I forgot to say that I want actor packages to contain actors, for example. To do this, I'll drag on the UML actor type from the base meta modeling package. I can then draw a composition relationship to say that the actor package can contain them. There are also a number of other types I want all packages to have, such as comments, tags, dependencies, and hyperlinks. Rather than draw these individually, I'm going to specify these using a generalization relationship to a base package type. My plugin code will look at the relationships of the inherited meta type when forming the property values. If things start to get complicated, I can get Rhapsody to try and relay out this meta model diagram with a hierarchical style. Once I'm happy the desired relationships are in place, I can then rerun the plugin. This will set the necessary properties on the stereotypes. This will include the property that determines the right click menu structure. Again, this can take a while, but it's a lot easier to do when the profile does all the work for me. When this completes, we can see that actor packages are now in the right click menus. By controlling the menus in this way, it's easier to direct a team to produce more consistent output. Consistency about how projects or parts of projects are developed can also be valuable when chaining methods together. For example, taking the outcome of use case analysis and consuming them in further downstream analysis, such as building an interaction model with executable state machines. We can think of the team developing the model as a system where different parts of the system work on different packages and hand off or consume artifacts of others. Packages are also the default granularity for configuration management of Rhapsody models and can be shared or referenced between different projects. This concludes the demo for now. The profile I've shown here is a prototype of my Autobahn profile. So if you're interested to know more, then let me know and I can maybe show you a few more details. That's it for now. My name is Fraser Chadburn and I'm a specialist in model-based engineering with Rhapsody as well as developing and delivering tool-based training for Rhapsody and IBM products, I specialize in providing consulting to clients to achieve higher value by extracting the best from their tools early in their adoption. If you do have any questions, then here's my email address. Thanks for your time.